Okay, welcome back. So what we're going to do this evening is learn how to use the AI cards in Snapship's Tactics. This allows solitaire players uh, to play against the cards, so to speak, without having to play head-to-head -head with two sets of um, chassis and uh, parts cards. The AI cards uh, look like this, and I've only pulled out four of them. They're every single preset build available for the... Uh, Ships currently supported by the game exist with four different cards, and you shuffle these, and you never know which one you're going to pick. This happens to be the one for the uh, automated Locust Claw Close Support Fighter. Okay? And this doesn't make any sense to viewers yet. It will. And hopefully it will also make sense to me. I have read through this section a few times, still quite confused. I figure this is one of these things where we're just going to talk it out. If I say it out loud, it might assist me in figuring this out. So, we've already advanced past page 20 and 21 and 22 and 23. Playing games with multiple ships, custom setup. We've already covered all this. Now, solo and cooperative play. This is where I start reading out of the rule book. And this may be multiple parts, okay? Because I don't want to go too much over 35 minutes with this. Uh, this Snapships Tactics starter box can also be played solo. Uh, where you pilot one ship against an AI opponent controlled by the game. Now, we've been playing me versus me, okay, which I've been doing since I was a kid. So it's very, it's second nature for me to play that way, but I, I would like to explore this as well. Uh, with additional kits, it can be, also be played cooperatively with a team of several human players against a team of AI ships. Now, we're using uh, some cards from uh, one of the expansion sets, okay, some of the AI cards. All right. Automated AI ships. The majority of rules and processes for AI-controlled ships are the same as for player-controlled ships, except that AI ships do not use part cards, power cubes, or heat cubes to perform actions. Uh, instead, their AI cards provide instructions for which actions to take. All of the previous rules in the rulebook apply, except where superseded by the AI-specific rules in the following section. All right, let's begin. AI ship activation order. Whenever it is the AI team's turn to activate a ship, and there are multiple AI ships that have not yet activated this round, randomly determine one to activate. Roll a dice for each unactivated ship and activate the one with the highest roll. Okay? That won't apply for us starting out. We're just doing 1v1 starting out, okay? AI ship deployment. Just like player ships, AI ships begin the game outside the play area and deploy the first time they activate. I always do that right before we start the, the, uh, the uh, before I turn on the video. When deploying an AI ship, roll a die and consult the following diagram to determine where it is placed. And I just, you know, one, two, three on the, right here, four, five, six, seven, eight, and critical. And you're just opposite of whichever edge the starting player is, you, the uh, solo player, is playing from. Deploying an AI ship cannot cause an overlap. If it overlaps because there is already a ship in that position, deploy the new ship range one away, in whichever direction is still within the play area and closest to a player ship. Regardless of where the AI ship is deployed, rotate it to face the nearest player ship before activating it. Okay? Now, this is going to talk about AI-specific icons. Most icons and actions that appear on AI cards are the same as those on part and chassis cards. There are a few new icons that provide more specific instructions for how AI should resolve them when performing those actions. Okay? Now, it begins with a rotation here. Instead of the normal rotation icons, AI ships have rotation icons with one or more arrows that show an intended orientation relative to the target. Uh, the arrows on the icon correspond to the arc lines on the AI's ship base. Rotate the AI ship the smallest angle possible up to the rotation number shown so that the corresponding line on the AI ship base points toward the target. In bold letters it says, In all cases, the AI ship only rotates until the intended arc line is lined up with the target's center. Any remaining rotation provided by the icon is ignored. Okay, so... Here are the examples in the rule book. So I interpret this it says rotate the face of the target one. So that's 45 degrees. If this said two in it, we rotate it 90 degrees. This one says rotate to align the target to your left or right. Uh, that's not contingent upon there being a ship in the way or a target to rotate to. 
rotate away from the target. Okay, so these are all important symbols to try to remember. A red arrow on top means the AI ship will rotate its front to face the target, but not completely. I mean, that would, that would in order to do a 180, I think this would have to be a 4 rather than a 1. A 1 is just, I mean, it, it explains it up here. Uh, rotate the AI ship the smallest angle possible up to the rotation number shown. So 1 is a 45 degree turn, okay? Red arrows on the left and right mean the AI ship will turn away from the target uh, so that its left or right arc line is pointing at the target. Okay, that's just orient. So you're all basing this from the target, okay? Um, choose whichever side of the AI ship will rotate, will rotate it the least. That's going to be hard to remember. A blue arrow on the bottom means the AI ship will turn away from the target so that its rear arc line points at the target, its rear arc line. But this was confusing on first reading. You have to read this paragraph up here very carefully to explain. One simply means uh, 45 degrees. Let me see if I can find a rotation on any of these. Uh, yeah. So just looking at the back of one of these, you can see up here... That says turn to face the target two clicks or two rotations. So that's a 90 degree turn. Either to the left, it depends on how close your angle in comparison to the target. Uh, is there any others that go beyond that? Not on these cards. So we're talking 45 or 90 degrees on these particular cards. Okay. And these cards do have a front and a back. Okay. And we'll uh, explore that presently. I think I've explained that. So blue means rotate away, red means rotate to face, and then red to the left or right means rotate to align the target to your left or right. And I, I sure hope I can remember that. U-turns. This is very important. When res resolving a U-turn icon, the AI ship will U-turn if doing so places the target in its front 180 degree arc. Otherwise, the AI ship will skip the U-turn icon. So. In other words, this is telling us that an AI ship would only obey the U-turn command if it made sense to do so, okay, in plain English. All right, now, AI card anatomy. I better grab one of these to reference as we go through this. Each ship's AI card has the following sections. Well, we can just use the one in the book, can't we? Uh, one, ship name. Now, this is an automated scarab claw interceptor in the book, y'all. Okay, two, ship arts. That's that. Three, base stats. That's all this information up here. So uh, the faction, the hull amount, and it's 13 for a scarab. We'll be dealing with a nine hull for our uh, custom AI ship here. We're using the Locust Close Support Fighter, but this is one of my... Uh, we're calling this the, the Claw Hornet ship. That's what we'll be using to fly the, uh, when we uh, test this. Okay, and the size of the ship is Part C, and type, size 4 ship. Four is point cost, so the Scarab Interceptor is four points. However, our Locust Close Support Fighter is only three points, and that matters when you're building squads. It won't come into play since we're doing 1v1, but I'm placing, or I'm pitting a, a size three ship against a size three ship, okay? To keep it fair. Uh, four point cost, five chassis and passive abilities. That's down here, and... We uh, have good examples on this card. So the chassis ability for this Locust Claw Close Support Fighter says, when you perform an attack action at, against a target at range 1, reduce the hit number by 1. Okay. And also a passive. During a collision, the other ship suffers 1 additional damage. That's very appropriate since we've got two sets of scarab wings on this thing for a collision. Although this won't have the uh, ram attack loaded since it's not a, a, a scarab. Okay. Um, I guess continue to have to keep putting this down um, so this is actually the back of the card but uh, part six is the critical hit table when the AI ship suffers a critical hit this table determines the effect B means the blank face of a die well, let's have a look at the one that comes with this so blank up to six the effect is negative one hopefully it'll explain what that means uh, 7 is a negative 1 plus a, a red hit. 8, negative 1 plus 2 red hits. Critical is a red X. That's some extra stuff that comes with the game, some extra cardboard, and 2 red hits. Okay. Now the card front. Okay. 
chassis action is part seven. Okay, okay, so at the start of the turn, uh, you uh, adjust the uh, ship's dial back to three evasion on this particular card. And then uh, that's 7A. B is conditional logic, and I don't think there is any on this card. There is no conditional logic that I can see. But C is movement icon, so during the chassis action, uh, this ship uh, will uh, change its evasion to three, and then uh, move toward the uh, player 45 degrees, then do a long maneuver, and then move toward the player 90 degrees, rotate toward the player 90 degrees. So rotate 45 toward the player, move long, rotate 90. That's the AI. And each of these cards might have a different... Uh, well, I say that. I think absolutely certain of that. I, I may have... Yeah, there's, there's different options on these cards. So that's the difference in some of these cards. That just happens to be the example we're using right now. Okay. Uh, so that's the movement icons. Now, eight, number of part actions is three. So that plays into this, I think. Yeah, part nine, part actions. That's what we see right here. Each possible action the AI can perform during its activation is listed here. In abstract terms, each of these rows represents a different part equipped to the ship. Okay. Each action box contains the following sections, left to right. Uh, a is conditional logic. That's in red here. Um, not sure how to interpret any of this just yet. Well, if you've got something within range 2, 3, or 4, and there's a plus, maybe 2, 3, or 4, or more, yeah, that's what that means. You would perform this action. Okay. Mm, usually this is an attack or a range or direction. Okay. Uh, and there's a... There's a, cons there's a description of conditional logic later on. B, action icons, that's all this. Uh, these function the same way as those on part cards with a few variations that provide more detailed instructions. Uh, okay, AI-specific icons. Okay, so that one we know means rotate to align the target to your left or right, depending on its orientation. Okay, now C is bonus ability text. And here's some. If we do this part action, move toward the target or move into terrain if able uh, when doing this. Okay. And there's some over here. Part image. Uh, we want to buy by this because of how we're uh, customizing these ships. But that, that tells you what parts are at play making this stuff happen. Okay. And now there's a note here. Not all AI cards have conditional logic for their chassis movement. If a card only has one row, it simply performs that movement like shown above. However, they show you an example where there's two options right there. For uh, You do the top one if, uh, if something is within range one. And then you do the bottom one otherwise. I think that's what that means. Maybe. Uh, turn toward the uh, enemy and, and do a short move forward. Otherwise, turn toward the enemy and do a, a long move. That's that's how I uh, interpret that. Okay, so I think uh, I'm going to pause and hydrate, and we'll continue on to page 28 of the rule book. Now, as we dive into this, do keep in mind, viewers, I'm not trying to instruct you on how to do this. I'm learning how to do it along with the viewers here, okay? Activating AI ships. Many of the rules and processes for moving an AI ship are the same as player ships, but some of the details are different. When an AI ship activates, it performs the following steps in order. 1. Determine target. Starting off, there will only be one target, the uh, opposing player. 2. Perform chassis action. And that's the, uh, uh, there's no venting of cubes on the AI cards, but that does in me involve uh, changing the evasion back down to its default and performing the movement action. Uh, 3. Perform part actions. That's this stuff. 4. Resolve end of activation effects. And uh, that would that would include missiles, okay? Missile locks on that. And this first match we'll play, there are no missiles at play. At least, well, no, this thing has missiles. Oh, that's going to make it very difficult for me to win this matchup, even against the AI, because I have no missiles. I do have an anti-missile attack. But this thing has heavy missiles, it looks like. That sucks. Oh, well. And five, discard AI card and select the next one. So that each round... It does something different, a different option, okay? Now we go back to one. Determine target. If there's only one player ship, it will be the target. 
That's easy enough. If there is more than one player ship, determine which player ship will be, ta will be the target during this activation. Once determined, that ship remains the target for all further actions during this AI ship's current activation. Okay, so it can't switch targets. To determine the target, you may need to measure the direction and range from the AI ship to various player ships. Choose the player ship that A does not have its base touching the base of the AI ship. B is in the front 90 degree arc of the AI ship. C is physically nearest to the AI ship. D has the lowest evasion rating. So that's a list of criteria to narrow it down, okay? Now, part two, perform chassis action. This step is almost the same as for a player ship. A, draw an AI card from the deck. B, reset the ship's evasion to the value shown on the AI card. C, remove all heat cubes from the AI. Well, I guess I'm mistaken. I guess you, but maybe heat put on from the player. Yeah, 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 that, that's good. That might be what those little red pips are right there. Okay, remove all heat cubes. D, the AI ship performs a chassis move. Okay, so the order here is draw the card, um, reset the evasion to whatever amount's on the card, remove heat cubes, and perform the chassis move. If one row is shown, perform that row. Let's grab this other one because there's two rows on this one, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. If two rows are shown, perform, perform the row that corresponds to the target's current range or direction by rotating and moving. Uh, so, I interpret that to say if the, if the ship is within range one or two, uh, we would move away from the opponent 45 degrees, go long, a long maneuver, then rotate toward the opponent 90 degrees. Or else... Rotate 45 degrees toward the opponent, whichever is the shortest way to do so. Go long, a long maneuver, and then rotate toward the opponent up to 90 degrees, or 90 degrees exactly, whichever gets them in the line of fire, line of sight. Okay? That's how I interpret that. Uh, see conditional logic icons to the right. Okay, yeah, this will explain everything we'll see here. Use the target ship's... Uh, position as the reference point for rotate toward, rotate away instructions in this sequence. Okay. And now we have a whole list of things. Blank. No icon. No restriction. Always perform this action. Uh, do we have a blank? Uh, yes. This first card, since there's only one choice, uh, you will always perform this chassis action on the top right there. Okay? Always. Okay? Uh, if there's a crosshair, and let's just flip all these over so I can see. Uh, there's no crosshair on these, but we'll see this again. If there's a crosshair, like a targeting reticle, perform this attack if the target is when the, the, weapons, the weapons range in firing arc. Now, a good example I can see of that is this uh, uh, particular, well, they're all missile attacks. No, here's one. The crosshair, if... Uh, let's read it again. Perform this attack if the target is within the weapon's range and firing arc. Well, that's pretty... I mean, you've got to be a direct line of sight, range 1, 2, or 3, to fire off this weapon. Okay? And you get to re-roll one dice if it misses. Okay? It's a pretty solid attack. I'm not confident now, looking at these cards, that I'm going to be able to defeat this AI. Just have to see. Okay, now. Anti-missile with damage threshold. Uh... You can see a couple of different icons here. Here's a version with a negative one modifier, and here's one without. If, the, if there are missile tokens assigned to the AI ship, and there won't be for our purposes, uh, count the total damage they will inflict if they all hit. If that total is equal to or greater than the number shown, use this part to perform an anti-missile roll and shoot them down. If there is a modifier as part of the anti-missile icon, <sighs> Apply it to the row. Otherwise, treat this icon like a crosshair icon described above. If neither of the above are true, skip this row. So if there's no missiles locked onto you, you would skip doing this one. Okay? Um, you 
Missile. Perform this action if there are missile tokens assigned to the AI ship. I don't see any of those. Uh, we're still talking about chassis move. I don't think that's going to come into play in our, in our gameplay here. Uh, range. And I, uh, there is one that does, does this. Range. Perform this action if the target ship is currently within the range of the AI ship. Some range icons have a plus at the top, which includes any distance beyond range 4. So in this example... Uh, during our chassis action, yeah, this explained it to us. If uh, if your opponent is within range one or two, you would do this top chassis action, this ch uh, top movement for the chassis action. Else or otherwise, you do this one. Okay, and we can we can sort of now interpret some of these others. But let's go ahead and read the last thing. Arc. Perform this action if any part of the target ship is currently within this arc of the AI ship. Note that a target only has to be partially within an arc required to be considered, e.g. a target that is on a line between two possible arcs, such as the front 90 degree arc and side 90 degree arc, is considered to be in both arcs. That's interesting. So, with that knowledge, let's interpret some of these cards. Let's just pick them all up. And it doesn't matter what order we do them in, because uh, we're going to be shuffling these cards anyway. Okay, so start of the turn, chassis action, reduce uh, evasion to three or raise it, depending on what happened. Uh, there's only one choice here. Uh, we rotate toward the opponent 45 degrees, use a long maneuver, then rotate toward the opponent 90 degrees or up to 90 degrees to get it in front of him, okay? This card, uh, if the opponent is within range one or two, uh, you're going to move, a, you're going to rotate away from the opponent, uh, 45 degrees, take a long maneuver, and then rotate toward the opponent, 90 degrees, or up to 90 degrees, okay? Otherwise, you'll do this movement, turn away from the opponent, no, turn toward the opponent up to 45 degrees, do a long movement, then turn toward the opponent up to 90 degrees, okay? This one, okay, if, you're, if the opponent is within your front 90 degree firing arc, uh, you'll move 45 degrees away from your opponent, go long, and then move uh, up to 90 degrees towards your opponent. Otherwise, uh, move away from your opponent up to 45 degrees, go long, and then move towards your opponent up to uh, 90 degrees. Okay, And this one, you have two choices. If, you, uh, if your opponent is within the front firing arc, uh, 90 degrees, I think it's 90, yeah, that's definitely 90, uh, go long, and then rotate towards your opponent up to 90 degrees. Otherwise, rotate away from your opponent up to 45 degrees, do a long maneuver, rotate towards your opponent up to 90 degrees. Okay, so that's what they're saying here. And then, um, this all applies to part actions as well, so we can start uh, interpreting these. Let me find the first card again. Okay, this one's confusing. Uh, this is an anti-missile check. No, actually, ooh, I'm going to have to look at this again. Yeah, anti-missile with damage threshold. So, uh, yeah, this appears to be, okay. If there are missile tokens assigned to this AI ship and the total damage they will inflict if they all hit is five or greater, you would do this attack. Uh, but, in order to pull it off, it's a line of sight. It's, a, it's the rail gun. It's a line of sight, and there, there's what you would roll. And you have to be within range three. Uh, otherwise, you move on to the next action. Yeah. Before we go into those, let's, can, let's, move, let's read on. And we're almost up to 25 minutes here. Performing actions. For each action, check the conditional logic icons for each part action row, starting from the first row and proceeding down the card. Perform the first part action whose criteria are met. We can't really practice this until we actually play the game. After performing an action, check to see if the AI ship has part actions remaining. If it does, begin again with the first part action at the top of the card 
checking the conditional logic, and continuing down the card. Repeat these steps as many times as the number of part actions on the AI card allow, allows and realize the conditional logic may apply differently each time. For instance, after a ship moves and or rotates, it may now be in range and arc to attack. In yellow here, it says, The AI ship may only resolve each row once during its activation. Skip rows that have already been performed during this activation. So I think in theory, uh, under the right circumstances, you could actually perform all four of these actions in one turn. It'd be very rarely that that would happen. But... Um, at some point, you discard this card, and then the next turn, you would use a different card. That's how I interpret it. Uh, they show you an example turn here, and I should read through that. Uh, the, okay. the AI will not perform actions that provide no benefit. Skip those rows. For example, an AI ship that has six evasion will not perform an action that only provides evasion. Or an AI ship that is already facing its target precisely will ignore further instructions to rotate toward that target. Yeah, that, that might make sense. If the AI ship has any special damage tokens, its actions will be limited. And okay, and there's those negative one and X, and we have some cardboard circular tokens in the game that we've yet to see. Okay, if no rows have conditional logic that matches, or it has already performed those row, the AI ship performs no further action no further part actions. And remember, this particular ship can only do three part actions. So there's actually no way for it to do all four. It might go down the list once, but uh, it eventually will only do three. Uh, if the AI ship still has remaining actions, spend them all as follows. If the ship has any critical damage tokens, spend actions to remove them. One critical damage token per action. Okay... That's confusing. So do one of these actions regardless if you need to or not to reduce a critical damage token. Um, let's continue reading. Maybe this will make more sense later. If a ship has any heat cubes on its chassis, spend actions to remove them. One heat cube per action. So, spinning the heat cube is the action. Removing the critical damage is the action. That, it's, that in itself is the action. You don't obey the action. If you have leftover actions, you can do this. It makes sense now. If the AI ship has no critical damage tokens or heat cubes, the remaining actions have no effect and are ignored. They do not carry over to future activations. Okay. So, we can use an action to remove a critical hit token. We can use an action to remove the red X, which I assume is a heat cube. Part 4. Resolve end of action effects. This step is exactly the same as for a player ship and is commonly used for resolving missile uh, impacts. Uh, and then part 5. Discard the AI card. Place the AI card in a discard pile beneath or beside its deck. If only one card remains in the AI deck, reshuffle the remaining card with all the discarded AI cards for that chassis to form a new deck. That's not how I would have done it, but knowing that's how you're supposed to do it, that's how I will do it. I just put it on the bottom and just cycle them out each time. But they want us, to sh once we've used all four of the cards, to shuffle them and then to uh, stack them back in a deck. So that's uh, the only thing left on page 29 is the example. Ugh. Uh, yeah, we've got to... This will have to bleed into a part two because I don't want to keep going. Let's just go ahead and look at the uh, active the sample. An AI Scarab Interceptor activates. Players draw the following card from the top of its deck and resolve its actions. Okay, that's the card. Uh, chassis action. Scarab resets its evasion to three, then does its chassis movement by rotating one toward the Scarab and moving short. Next, Scarab will perform two part actions. Why only two? Oh, because the Scarab only has two part actions. Our Locust here will perform three. Okay, first part action. Starting at the top of the list, there are no missiles currently assigned to the ship and no... To okay. There we go. See the missile icon? The, that's got a seven on it. Well, there are no missiles currently assigned to the ship and no target within range one to attack. Okay, so we can use this not only to take out missiles, but also to attack. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, similarly, because there are no missiles assigned to Scarab, it also skips the second row. Uh, 
which is a missile. Perform this action if there are no if there are missile tokens assigned to the AI ship. Okay. So we would skip both those actions because there's no missiles in play. For the third row, Saber is within the left slash right 90 degree arc requirement. So Scarab will use its rotate 2 to align itself directly toward the Saber showing there. Okay. And yeah, sure enough, there it is, the third entry on that card. And we haven't seen that. I wouldn't have known how to interpret that. It's left or right arcs. Okay. Uh, second part action, starting at the top of the priority list again, not the fourth, the top again. You always start from the top and go back down. Part one, part two, part three, and so on, okay? Um, starting at the top of the priority list again, players check to see if the saber is now within the firing arc and range. It is. If it wasn't, Scarab would end up performing uh, the fourth row instead, right? Uh, players determine the target number for the attack to be four, two for this weapon plus Saber's evasion of two. Saber's evasion, not Scarab's evasion. The AI rolls the attack, getting a three and a six. So you would do the attack the same way you do if it were a player's ship. Okay. The AI has performed two part actions, resolve end of action effects, and then discard the AI card. So uh, on this particular... So this means two different things. If there's a missile, uh, we would uh, do an anti-missile check, uh, which means we'd have to roll five or higher. I think that's how I interpret that. It's oh, there's a. I'm not really sure what this information means. If there's a missile token assigned it to count the total damage they inflict, that total is equal to or greater than the number shown. Use this part to perform an anti-missile roll, and shoot. The okay, so anti-missile. Is just that. You just do an anti-missile check, and you have to roll a five or higher uh, on each missile uh, to see if you shoot it down. Uh, otherwise, it's an attack, okay? If you're within range three of your opponent in a line of sight directly ahead, you can perform this attack, and that's what you would do. If not, you go down to this next one. If you're within range two to three and within... Uh, if you're within range two to three in a 180-degree front arc. That's, that's huge. You'd fire off these two uh, Heat Seeker missiles. Okay? Uh, if that one doesn't apply, you go to this one and you'd simply move uh, uh, you'd rotate uh, to the left or right depending on the orientation of your opponent to get them in one of those arcs. I think that's what it means. Let's uh, reconfirm that. Rotate to align the target to your left or right, whichever is closer and uh, so on the first turn, you would do that but uh, that on one of your part actions. But once you've used that one, you wouldn't do it again. Then you go down this criteria again. And then we get here. And if you're within range 2, 3, or 4 or more, uh, you would uh, do a short maneuver left or right and increase your uh, evasion by 1 and then move, the tar move toward target or move into terrain, if able, with this short uh, sidestep to the left or right. Okay? Well, there's a lot of exceptions to this, and we'll cover that in the next part. But I, I have a, a substantially better working knowledge of how to do this, and I knew I would if I said it out loud, as if I was trying to teach a class how to do it, not knowing myself what I'm doing, which that applies to most teachers anyway. Uh, but just saying it out loud helps me uh, learn to do this. So again, this was not a tutorial. This was literally me learning in real time how these AI cards work, and I do understand it a little better. There's more to learn, and we'll check. We'll uh, we'll turn the page and cover that next time. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to someone. If not, go watch someone else's tutorial on Snapships Tactics AI, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.